We are standing in the auditorium of the former Robert Russell Moton High School. Uh, we are standing in the very spot that on April 23rd of 1951, Barbara Rose Johns would lead a walkout of 450 plus students here at the Robert Russell Moton High School. They were protesting unequal conditions within their learning environment, and they were also protesting the need for a new or renovated school building. So this is the stage that she stood on. Um, the podium here, uh, classmates of hers said that she would take that shoe and she would smack the side of the podium to command the attention of her classmates. And then she would proceed to lay out the reasons in which she felt that her classmates should join her in the strike committee and walking out. If I remember talking to Joan, she was seated somewhere here, sinking down into her chair when she saw what her sister was doing. Yeah, Joan's Johns Cobbs, uh, the sister, of, younger sister of Barbara Rose Johns, was an eighth grade student in the audience on that day. And she often talks about not even knowing herself the plans that Barbara and that strike committee had been putting into place. And so when Barbara takes to the stage, she talks about sulking down in her seat, uh, a little bit of embarrassment, uh, not knowing the reason that your sister is standing on stage in front of the entire school. Um, so, you know, at Moton High School, eighth grade would have been uh, the first grade in which you would have attended school here. Um, so just think being in this space, 450 plus students um, in the conditions in, that that created uh, for the environment here at Moton. Um, you know, an amazing thing that these students were able to do. And we always, again, emphasize this idea of collective action. Um, all 450 plus students walking out together um, is what helped to make the difference um, in terms of this having the impact uh, that they hoped it would. So we are in gallery two. Uh, the auditorium space was gallery one. We are laying out our founding documents. Uh, we are showing that um, you know, this was a country that utilized the words all men are created equal, but it certainly wasn't something that we were living up to. And through this, individuals begin to see the differences uh, between the educational facilities here in Farmville with the all black Robert Russell Moton High School and the all white Farmville High School, which was less than a mile away. Um, and you can very clearly see the differences between those school structures. What I love about, you know, being in this gallery, we're starting to get a sense of the conditions here at Robert Russell Moton High. And one of the things that the students talked about was the construction of the tar paper shack structures, which resided on the museum, on the high school property here at Robert Russell Moton High. There were three tar paper shack structures constructed in the late 1940s, and the students referred to them as adult-sized chicken coops because of how poorly they were built. And so this is a great visual and hands-on experience for museum visitors to even feel what those tar paper shack structures felt like. So that, this is what tar paper is? Yep. Oh, okay. And then they're also seeing, you know, through the framing that we have replicated, just how poorly built and how inadequately built they were in terms of insulation and other items. I'm just checking none of those original shacks for me. No. So we have the footprint of one in which we have constructed what we call our tar paper shack building. It's a pavilion and meeting room space. It has the look 
of a tar paper shack on the sides and on the back of that building and sits in the footprint of one of the original tar paper shacks. In the parking lot, you will see an awkward concrete pattern that is uh, representative of the footprint of one of the tar paper shack structures. And then the final structure was in front of the building here. But when visitors walk through the doors as if they're walking into the tar paper shack, you really catch a glimpse of life inside of the tar paper shack. Uh, this photo um, very vividly um, gives you an inside look into that structure. Um, and you can see how poorly built that structure was. At the heart of those structures were the potbelly stoves. And also in this gallery, you're starting to get a glimpse of what life was like here at Moton. Social life, the aspirations that students had, the sports activities they participated in, the academic experience that they had, even though they did not have what they knew they deserved and needed by way of resources, they still had wonderful educators and staff that were delivering a strong academic experience. And so it was because of some of these things, such as the social life, such as the faculty and staff, that the students here at Robert Russell Moton High did not initially want to integrate. That was not the goal. They just wanted better access to resources. They wanted that new or renovated school building. As we continue our journey, we're moving towards the student walkout. And we see here that a leader emerges by the name of Barbara Johns. We start to get a glimpse of some of the classmates that would be uh, working alongside her as members of that strike committee, Carrie, John Stokes, John Watson, um, three in particular. And this is my favorite photo um, in the permanent exhibit. It's a photo of a mass meeting, a rally at First Baptist Church that takes place on May 3rd, uh, following the April 23rd student walkout. This was a meeting in which the NAACP legal team, staff members from the NAACP's Virginia State Conference would descend on Farmville 